Welcome back to MMA Odds Breaker. I'm Frank Trigg. This week on the other line of the fine, we have Danny Castillo getting ready to fight Charlie Brenneman at UFC 172. Of course, that's the return of John Jones and Glover Tuxura, April 26th in Baltimore. Uh, Danny, have you ever been to Baltimore before? I actually have. Um, uh, I, they had a, a fight in D.C., and uh, the UFC took uh, Faber and I to the Baltimore Ravens uh, training facility. It was amazing. It was one of the coolest times I've had on a fight trip. Did you get a chance to tour around Baltimore at all? No, not really. Uh, we, we just drove from D.C. to Baltimore. It was really green at the time. Um, it looked really nice. It was a, a pretty area. I didn't really expect that when you hear Baltimore, you know. But uh, it, was, it was pretty nice. If you get a shot when you're out there, the best, in my opinion, and you know, I eat everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> the best seafood restaurant on the entire planet is Jimmy's Seafood. They have the best crab cakes that you can get anywhere in the world. Absolutely the best. So if you get a chance, uh -huh. after the fight's over, because it's not good for pre-diet stuff, you know, pre-weight, you get a chance, go to Jimmy's Seafood Restaurant. is absolutely one of the best spots in town. And John Jones' brother, uh, Arthur, spends a lot of time there. So it's it's actually uh -huh. a, a good a good spot for a lot of other athletes. You walk in there, have a sit down and have a meal, and you see a ton of other professional athletes running around there. It's uh, an awesome spot. Yeah, if he's there, then I probably don't want to go there before weigh-in, huh? Nope. He's a big... Yeah, no, because Art will do. He, that man can eat. I've had I've had a meal with him here in Las Vegas. So that man can eat. Like it's ridiculous. Like, I'm surprised that John's not a bigger guy because of the way that that his whole family eats. It's kind of crazy. Man, you need to put together like a blog. Uh, Trick eats everywhere. You know, Trick meets the world or something. That'd be cool because there's a lot of places that I go to, and you know, there's some hidden gems that I don't know about, and uh, that'd be awesome for everyone else to know about it. You're actually like the third person that, that said I should do this like by city, like should put all these categories in by city, you know, so when somebody, somebody goes back in and goes, hey, look, I want to, you know, I'm going to, um, you know, Los Angeles, where should I eat in Los Angeles? And he's like, oh, here's trick spots and I'm going to go eat in this place and or this city, you know, I, I've actually thought about it in the past because I, I am a foodie. I do love to cook, but I love to eat out when I'm on the road too, you know, so it's a, it's this constant battle of getting older and trying to watch my weight, trying to keep the six pack and trying to look good for when I'm on camera, as well as still being able to train and compete against guys that are half my age. That's, that is now very daunting, but I also too like to sit down and man, I love to have food. I love food. Yeah, man. I, that'd be a, you should, uh, we should really talk after this interview uh, offline about, uh, putting together like a little app, maybe to, you know, tricks, picks or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. You could outsource to some engineers in India and we could get it made for pretty cheap. <laughs> that wasn't racist at all. Not at all. Bunch of, no, no, that, that wasn't that wasn't meant to be racist at all by any means. That's you know, and I'm gonna have my lawn cut by a bunch of Mexicans. My pool's gonna be taken care of, but you know, it's like it's just it's a reality, Charlie. It's just what how it goes. All the cheap technical stuff goes out to India. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's what I was saying. I wasn't uh, trying to offend any of you people at all. I'm trying to get you in trouble. That's all. Don't don't worry about me. I <laughs> don't. I I have enough. I, it's easy enough for me to do it myself. I don't need your help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, true. All right. Well, let's let's talk about fighting here. Um, you got Charlie Brennerman coming up at UFC 172, but let's talk about your last fight, Edson Barboza. That was back in uh, December of 2013. You lost a decision, majority. What could you have done differently in that fight to pull off the victory as opposed to getting beat? Man, it's something that haunts me to this day. Um, you know, I was just watching the countdown, and Edson Barbosa was all over the countdown for the upcoming weekend. And, you know, in the back of my mind, it's like, that should be me. Um, what I didn't do um, is I didn't push in the third round, and that's something that, uh, you know, uh, it's going to haunt me forever for the rest of my career because that's a fight that I should have won in the first round, and it came back to bite me in the butt in the end. Um, so, you know, that I just – really need to to focus on really executing you know the perfect game plan the game plan was to come forward on them and to eliminate those those leg kicks which for the most part i did a really good job of um i thought and um you know i just should have been a little bit more offensive um i had him i had him finished a couple times in the first round and uh, unfortunately for some reason or another not i don't think it was a conditioning um thing because um you know i i feel like i'm I, I'm a hard worker and I felt conditioned and when the fight was over, I still had a little bit left in the gas tank. And, um, you know, that was really, uh, sad for me. Um, 
you know, knowing that I had some stuff left in the gas tank and I didn't leave it all out there. So that's something that um, I vowed to myself that would never happen again. And uh, it starts in eight days with Charlie Brenneman. Did you have to work on that in practice? Like really work on, okay, th this is my gauge, like learning your new, because you guys at Alpha Male seem to get in great shape. You guys seem to, to always be able to push yourselves to the next level. So every time you fight, you have more of a gas tank. Is it tough to really learn, okay, right now, this is my level of output and I'm at 50%, but next week, that same level of output only puts me at, you know, only puts me at, uh, at uh, uh, 70%. Like I got to start pushing myself out. So I'm draining this gas tank down, you know, all the way done. So when training is done, I'm completely spent. Is that something you guys have to work on and practice all the time too? Well, um, you know, one of the, one of the cool things that, I mean, one of the things that Coach Bang says um, every day is uh, show up on time, get better, get tired, take care of your partners. So those are something that's embedded in every alpha male guy um, because he says it three times a day, four times a day. So um, get tired is one thing that um, that I, I try to focus on. But a little bit for this camp, what I did is I did more of um, hypoxic, hypoxic training, and that's elevation training. Um, all the guys at Snack, which is uh, Victor Conti's guys in the Bay Area, um, all those guys are using it, and um, I started to use it also. So, I mean, if if, uh, if, if the listeners um, have Instagram accounts, you can go on my Instagram and you can see a little bit about some of the stuff I do. Um, it's probably about eight, eight uh, I think they're four-liter bags filled with uh, oxygen that's created from a machine that, um, that, that simulates elevation. So... Um, I'm training at, uh, you know, 12,000 feet above sea level, um, down at sea level with the mask on. And it's completely different from those training masks. You know, I'm not, I'm not knocking those training masks, but this is technology involved. This is, uh, you know, a, a really expensive uh, piece of um, equipment that I'm using. And, um, you know, there's a lot of science behind it, and I can already feel the difference. I'm getting like a 60-beat drop um, in a minute. Um, 60 to 7, so 60 to 70 deep drops. So I'll be at 170. I'll drop all the way down to 110 um, in that minute. So I already feel the difference. Another thing that I'm I'm doing um, in practice is, you know, when I see when I hear the timer, you know, 15 seconds when Bang is yelling, 30 seconds. I'm already looking for a takedown because, um, I mean, as you know, wrestling is probably one of the hardest things to do, and it burns a lot of gas. So. Even if I'm dead tired at the end of the at the end of each sparring round, I'm looking for the takedown with 30 seconds left. Now, when, when you say this mask, you 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 said you're getting these bags hooked up to this to this machine. Are they? Is it like the old school when you see a guy in a treadmill has a mask on, there's a tube running to this machine, and that's how he's training, or is it something completely different? Well, no, that's uh, well, I'm not sure because there's a couple. They got those the training masks are like 50 bucks that you put on your face, and you know it's not connected to a machine. This machine is connected, uh, this mask is connected to a, a cord that goes to about, you know, 10, you know, three liter bags. And that, those uh, bags are filled up with oxygen that's produced by this machine that, um, that you know, lessens the oxygen in it. So it's essentially you're at 12,000 feet training. So how long do those bags but, last you? How long do they last me? Yeah. Um, so I'm getting I'm getting through all ten in about four three minute rounds. Oh, okay. so I do I do uh, three uh, three minute rounds on the bag uh, with the mask on and the bags attached to me. So I'm getting through all those bags in you know twelve minutes, where you give or take a, a minute of rest in between. After that, I go to the battle ropes. We go twenty seconds on, fifteen seconds off um, for two, and then that's six. That's done six times. Um, twice. And so it's what's pretty your, complicated. Danny, what's your what's your Instagram so people at home can take a look at it? It's uh, Last Call One Fifty Five. I don't even know if I follow you, so I, I might actually have to look that up now too because I'm interested in, in that yeah, kind well, of stuff. Because well, you should because I follow you. <laughs> well, that just that just makes me feel bad now. No, I follow <laughs> you. Yeah, I'm following you. Never mind. So I, I looked right now just to make sure because I feel like an idiot if I wasn't. <laughs> no, I follow you. So let's uh, let's talk about Charlie Brenneman now. How do you see him as a fighter, and what do you think he's going to try to do uh, when you guys are competing? Mm. Charlie Brenneman uh, is extremely good at making it an ugly fight. He's fought some of the best names in the sport at welterweight, you know, and he's dropping down. Um, you know, he's a great wrestler. 
basically what he does is he um, uses that overhand right to come in to connect you to you and uh, take you down, and he tries to grind you out with ground and pound. Um, so, you know, I, I I have a lot of respect for him, but in terms of, uh, you know, him against me as a skill set, I think I'm better than him at everything. Do you see this fight being more stand-up, or do you see this fight being more, more battle on the ground? I'm going to keep it, I'm, I'm going to try to keep it standing as much as possible. So this camp, you know, I mean, I can give out the game plan as much, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but without giving out the whole game plan, I've been working on a lot of spacing, um, a lot of footwork, and definitely sprawl, sprawl and brawl. All right, well, that's Danny Castillo. He's getting ready to fight Charlie Brennan. Thanks for coming out here for a couple minutes with MMA Odds Break. I appreciate it, Danny, and uh, we'll definitely be talking again here next couple of days about uh, trying to do a blog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's get that food app to get. Let's get that app together. All right, bud. I'll talk to you soon, man. All right. Take care.